Some of you might not have an idea what a filament dryer is or what do you use it for. And today I want to show you the ones that I have tested and why do I think that it's a good idea to have one of them. But first, let's give 30 seconds to my sponsor. If you're building open source projects, you need a good source for printed circuit boards. PCBWA is that partner that can help you bring your ideas to reality, especially in projects like building a board. PCBWA is right now hosting an innovation contest. Go to their website, sign up, and enjoy this opportunity to create something cool and earn some prizes in the process. We all know that 3D printers use plastic filaments to create the models that we design and we just print with the printers. What many people don't know is that some of these filaments, depending on the kind and depending on the type of filament that you have, they can absorb a lot of moisture from the environment. Filaments like, for example, nylon or TPU, which is the one that I use the most, those are very famous for taking that humidity from the environment and just getting it inside the plastic. And what happens is that when you try to print with a wet filament, there's gonna be certain artifacts and certain things that you're not gonna like. So for example, when you have a wet filament, you're gonna see that the, the face of your 3D printed part is not going to be smooth because those water particles are in there and they will be exploding, they will be popping with the heat of the 3D printer process. That will make that your print is going to have small holes around and things that are just not going to let that part look good. That's the reason why you want to dry your filament before and sometimes even during the process of printing something so you have the smoothest and closest to perfect print that you can do if you're looking for that special and very good quality on your print. Drying a filament, it's something that, as I'm saying, it's important if you want to have that especially good quality. And there are many ways to do this. Uh, there's, of course, the do-it-yourself way where you can take the, the roll of filament and put it in the oven in your house. But in my case, I don't think my wife would like that much, that idea. There are other things, for example, there are some mushrooms uh, dryers that you can modify, cut some part and something, and then they fit the filament inside and you can use that to dry your filament. And then it's of course the Prusa way where they created a model that you print and you just put some desiccant inside and you use it to keep and protect your, your filament. But there are some companies creating products specifically made for this like these ones, filament dryers, where if you are willing to spend a little bit of money, then you have something that is dedicated and it works very well with your printers to get that especially good quality that you're looking for. When you're looking at brands doing this kind of work, I would think that Sunlu is one of the most famous ones. You can find it in Amazon, you can find it in so many places that it's almost difficult to not see them when you're looking for a filament dryer. I bought my first filament dryer from them, this one here. It's a very simple dryer, which only have this small screen in front and you cannot, you cannot do much with it. You can increase the temperature, lower the temperature, and that's kind of it. You get a reading of the, the temperature and the humidity and nothing else. There is nothing extra to control, there is nothing. On the plus side, there is something that is good with this and it's the simplicity. You just put your filament in, you click on the temperature and that's it. If you are kind of new to the 3D printing world, you're gonna have to do a little bit of research to know what temperature needs each one of the filaments to be dry. I don't remember them by, by memory, so I kind of know that for uh, TPU you need something around 50 degrees, but again, it's something that you're going to have to research and it's something that you're going to have to change manually depending on the filament that you want to use if you are using this one. The second thing that is worth mentioning about this specific filament dryer box is that it has only two exit points for the filament, which one is here on the front 
one is here on the top. That means that, for example, in my case, that I have a V0, a Voron V0, where the filament comes on the back, the position of the filament box has to be backwards toward me, it's like showing me the butt, because the filament can only go from the front to the back of the printer, and it just becomes uncomfortable. You don't have to have it on all the time during the process uh, of printing, but since the box itself has a rolling system, it actually works pretty well to have your filament roll there and, and feed it to the 3D printer. So I, I, I kind of use it as a both things, the filament roller and the dryer box. Sunlook came with an upgraded version of the box that I just showed, which is called the S2. This one that I have here. In this, in this case, this one has a bigger screen. It has upgraded the system of choosing what temperature you're gonna use because now you can click on the screen and come to the name of the filament that you're going to be drying up and the system itself or the box itself chooses what's the right temperature. So they're making our life easier and I appreciate that quite a lot. If you want to manually change the, the, the value of the temperature, you can do that as well. And something that I like very much from this box is that you can choose or at least you can track how long have you been drying your filament? If you don't know about it, you normally need a few hours to dry a filament. So uh, in many cases, I just put the filament to dry and I go and I do something else. But then sometimes I forget about when do I start it and when it's supposed to be finished. So it might not be so important to have like really good track of the time, but it's good to have an idea. And this one is definitely doing that work much simpler. The S2 uses the same rolling system inside, so it's very free and very good to drag filament while you are printing as the, as the S1. But when I was printing nylon with carbon fiber, which is an abrasive uh, filament, I felt that the drag was a little bit too much with the angles of the filament when it was coming out from this box. Similarly to the S1, this one has only two exit points and one is on this side and the other one was on this side. That doesn't give you a lot of options of where does the filament coming from and the angle that the filament is gonna feed your 3D printer. And if you have an abrasive filament, you are adding to that resistance which is never good. And then you can have problems when printing. I had to do a modification to this case to open a little bit more the hole uh, to reduce that drag, that resistance, so I could print with nylon and carbon fiber. It worked, but it's, it, it required a little bit of a modification for in my case. Something that has been brought up by many on the 3D printing community is the fact that neither Sunlu boxes have a fan. And why do you need a fan? Because when you're drying something that is very wet, you get condensation of that water leaving the plastic. And since everything is enclosed in these kind of dryers, the humidity just stays inside and returns to the filament. So you need, or ideally you will need a fan pushing that humidity out of the box so you have a really, really good uh, chance of drying your filament. And there is where the third box that I bought comes into place. This one that I have here, the A box, it's supposed to solve many of those problems. In the case of the A box, you have a fan inside. You see on the back that has the exit of that fan and you shouldn't cover this at any time because then you are uh, just blocking that that way and something that when i started to research this box i liked it was the fact that you have an exit exit point on the top on the back and on the front so in this case for example if i'm using it with my v0 i can use the back exit to connect to the printer and I can still see the front to monitor the temperature and those kind of things that I need to do. 
So when I bought the ABOS box, I thought, okay, I'm ready. I have the best box of ever and I don't need anything else. But after using it a few weeks, I see that there are a lot of good things with this box, but I'm still missing a few things from this one. If I'm going to be specific, there are two things that I'm missing on this box to make it perfect and use it as my only and daily drive. Number one is the fact that this one doesn't have any kind of screen showing the time or uh, any kind of other information. You do have a little, a little screen here showing the humidity level, but that's it. It's just humidity. So if I turn this on, I have no idea how many hours or how many minutes it's been running. Do you need that information all the time? Again, maybe not. You can put an alarm on your phone or something and that will be good. But if I'm comparing it to this one, you have it in here. So it's a, it's a point of comparison. The second one that is the one that is really important for me is this. In the case of the ABOS, the filament is resting on this plastic center part, which means that when you are dragging, when you are pulling the filament out of this, this is the part that is going to be creating resistance against your filament draw. There is nothing special with this part making it easier for the roll to actually roll. In the case of the Zulu, you have rolling parts specially designed to make it easier. You have less resistance on this one than on this one. So again, if I'm going to the case of printing filament that is very sensitive to dragging or if your printing printer is not working especially well with a little bit of resistance, most probably this one is going to create that resistance that I'm talking about and is in the case of the three boxes is the less good for that kind of problem that I'm talking about. But the ABOS has many other good things. One thing that I like pretty much is the fact that inside you have a place to have desiccant. So even if you are not printing or, or the box is not on, you're still doing a little bit of work to keep that filament as dry as possible. The interface on the ABOS is pretty simple. It's just a knob with the names of the different filaments on it so you can choose. Again, super simple, but it's, it works. You don't really need much more than that. Price-wise, of course, the Sunlu S1 is going to be the cheapest of the three of them. But again, this model, it's kind of like, you don't really need it when you have this one. The S2 comes around $86 if you look in Amazon, when the A bus, it's coming around $70. So this one, it's a little bit cheaper. It has good functions like the fan. It's very simple to use, but the negative part is the resistance that you get when dragging the filament. This one is a little bit more expensive, but it has this nice screen that you can use to choose easily the filament type that you're gonna dry, and uh, it keeps track of the time that you have. Rolling wise, your filament roll is going to roll much better on this one than on this one. So if you were to ask me which one I would choose, I think both of them will work. Both of them will work for most of what I do, but just think about this. When I'm going to print some abrasive filament, I'm not gonna be able to use this one most probably. So I will be using this one with the hack that I have. I know that a lot of people, what they're doing is to choose this one and hack it to add a fan. And I think if you do that, then this one becomes a winner. But out of the box, you have a very good competition between them and it will be a little bit more what kind of filaments you are using and what kind of position you might have on your printer. Because again, remember that this one, the exit points are here, which if you have a printer that is fitting from kind of like the bottom, this is going to be a little bit annoying for that. This one will fit better on that kind of situations. If you are printing while drying at the same time, which not everyone it's going to be doing. 
I hope that I show you something today that is interesting for you, that helps you decide on which film and box might work better for you. Thank you for watching and see you soon.